This is war. As Russian forces continue to advance, Ukrainian command is running out of time, people, and options. There are high intensity of battles in the direction of Chasov Yar, but there are no significant changes in the passage of the LBS. The Ukrainian commander wants to keep Chasov Yar if Russian forces capture Chasov Yar. Russian troops will move further towards the center of Ukraine. Chasov Yar is located at a height, which allows shelling of a large area from it. Taking it under control will open the Russian Federation's way to other large cities of Donbass, Kramatorsk, Konstantinovka, and Slavyansk. In the meantime, Russian drone troops support the offensive on Chasov Yar, protecting infantry in battles. The footage shows new interceptions of signals from AFU Kamikaze UAVs and their subsequent destruction by RF electronic warfare specialists. Operators daily jam and intercept control of Kamikaze drones of the armed forces of Ukraine when they attempt to attack RF equipment and positions. Donetsk direction, boiler east of Krasnogorovka. After a short tactical pause, Russian troops resumed their advance in Krasnogorovka, breaking through the defenses of Ukrainian formations from the east and south. Units of the Russian armed forces managed to occupy at least part of the fortified area of the armed forces of Ukraine between the Stalin Highway and May 1st Street, as well as the sector east of Western Street. They also advanced east of Gyalogicheskaya Street and knocked out the AFU from some positions in the Solnechny Micro District, gaining a foothold in the vicinity of the school. At the same time, AFU continues to hold lines in the eastern and Solnechny Micro Districts, where there are compactly located high rise buildings suitable for defense. The area of the Mariinsk Central District Hospital the clinic and the agricultural technical school, as well as the forest plantations east of Krasnogorovka and south of the Borisovka pond, remain under the control of the Ukrainian armed forces. To the north of the fireproof plant, there are battles in the area of Sumskaya and Central Streets, but no progress has been recorded there yet. The defense in the city is held by a hodgepodge of territorial defense units, combined units of the 59th Motorized Brigade, Border Guards, as well as one of the battalions of a separate presidential brigade. But the presence of 46 airborne brigades and three DSHB-80 airborne brigades, which previously held the Krasnogorovsky refractory plant, was no longer noticed. Probably, after the loss of the main part of the territory, the formations were withdrawn to the rear to make up for losses and regroup. In addition, the advance of the Russian armed forces in Natailovo is recorded, where AFU was knocked out of the territory of an elementary school and adjacent two-story buildings. Fighting continues in the central part of the village. The Russians have advanced in the northeastern part of Krasnogorovka. The situation for the defense of the southeastern part of the city is becoming more complicated, Ukrainian military analysts admit with alarm. In the Kurakovsky direction, there are heavy battles in Krasnogorovka for the northeastern part of the city and in the area of the Krasnogorsky refractory plant, other Ukrainian resources previously reported. Vremenyevska direction, return to Staromayorska and battles in Urajaynye. After the successes of recent days, Russian troops continue to push back AFU in the Urozhaina Staromayorska sector. In the Urozhaina area, fighting continues in the ruins of farms, where the Russian armed forces, despite counterattacks by the armed forces of Ukraine, are holding positions. Assault groups are also advancing along Central Street. Russian troops carried out another attack in a forest belt east of the village, but the outcome of the battle remains shrouded in the fog of war. Fire support for the attacking units is provided by aviation and artillery. At the same time, assault groups from 1466 motorized rifle regiments improved the tactical situation in the forest belts west of Staromayorskoy. 
There are also battles on the western outskirts of the village. By the middle of the day, information appeared about the entry of fighters of the 394th Motorized Rifle Regiment into Staromayorskoy. Several houses were taken. From the south, Russian forces advanced about half a kilometer to the north, occupying the territory of a local school, and fighting is taking place near the village council. Staromayorska and Urajina came under the control of Ukrainian formations during the summer counteroffensive in 2023. The Russian group of troops Vostok is consistently regaining lost positions. There is no talk yet about a large-scale offensive in the Vremevsky direction. At the moment, the Russian army is improving the tactical situation. Of Deevsky direction, advance of the Russian armed forces in Uman. In recent days, in the Avdeevsky direction, Russian troops have been actively trying to develop successes in several sectors at once, including those that were covered for some time in the fog of war. During the day, footage of the flag being hoisted over the memorial in the center of the northern part of Umansky appeared on the Internet. And already towards the end, there were reports of the complete liberation of the village, although there is no reliable confirmation of this information yet. This created a threat of encirclement of AFU forces in Osnoborodovka. On the Ocheratinsky ledge, there are high-intensity counter-battles. At the same time, between Umansky and Orlovka, south of the Cizro 51801 highway, there is a fortified area about two kilometers long, Taking into account the configuration of the front line, it is highly likely that it also came under the control of the Russian armed forces. Without its capture, going to Umansky would have been quite a difficult task. To the south, in Netailovo, a decrease in the concentration of AFU manpower was noticed. It is still difficult to say whether this is due to the lack of reinforcements or the retreat of the Ukrainian armed forces. According to the latest information, Russian troops are engaged in heavy fighting in the center of the village. In the northern area in the Arkhangelsk region, the Russian Armed Forces units are strengthening their previously occupied lines, continuing to clear the area to the west of the settlement. There were no attempts to counterattack the Ukrainian Armed Forces during the day. There is also news that Russian forces have captured the village of Veseloy, Ukrainian defenses continue to sag in various sectors of the front. It seems the secondary lines of defense that were prepared for the Ukrainian army were not up to par. According to this posted video, a Ukrainian soldier complained that the secondary defensive line was not prepared with concrete or any real support. Instead, it was a simple trench. This was also confirmed by Ukraine MP, Ukraine does not have defensive fortifications beyond Avdeevka, Ukrainian MP Mariana Bezuglaya complained. According to her, not a single commander-in-chief of the armed forces of Ukraine built them. In Rabatino, heavy fighting continues. Through the deadly fire, powerful footage of RF fighters breakthrough in Rabatino, now close up. Ukrainian resources publish footage from a different angle. Soldiers of the 70th Regiment on a motorcycle are breaking through to AFU positions. Death is literally circling over them, delivering blow after blow. Each arrival of a kamikaze drone and a projectile is a few meters from the soldiers. In the last frames, a fighter throws a grenade into the dugout of the armed forces of Ukraine and instantly jumps in after him. Immediately next to the place where he was standing, a shell flies in. From the Zaporozhye front, they report the advance of assault groups of the Russian armed forces in Rabotino from the center to the northern outskirts. It is reported that heavy oncoming fighting is taking place. North, west of Verbovoy, the Russian armed forces repelled AFU attacks, covering their advancing units with mortar and artillery fire.
In the Kopiansky direction, the Russian army storms Berestovoy and threatens the logistics of the Ukrainian Armed Forces Group, breaking through to the shore of Oskol, a detailed analysis of the situation at the front by the end of May 9. In the Kupiansk direction, fighters of the Russian armed forces have already broken through to Berestove, the successful completion of the assault of which opens a direct road for RF army to the banks of Oskol. RF units have plans to access the river south of Kovsharovka in the area of the villages of Kolesnikovka and Kruglikovka. Now daily battles continue near Berestovoy, in which the Ukrainian army traditionally and senselessly grinds down its own personnel. Since the armed forces of Ukraine are weak in counterattacking and holding positions, the Russian armed forces are now threatening the command of the square with the capture of the most important rock railway and the liquidation of the entire defensive system around the Kupiansk urban agglomeration. The surrender of the railway tracks of the armed forces of Ukraine, the most important logistics hub, will mean the end of the supply of the Ukrainian group in this area and the inevitable flight of the AFU from advantageous positions. Russia will launch an offensive on the Kharkov region in mid-May. 50,000 Russian military personnel are concentrated near the border. Kraken Commander Nemichev. One scenario for an attack on Kharkov could be isolating the city by cutting the main road leading to Kiev. Another option is to move about 10 km closer, putting the eastern outskirts of the city within range of artillery fire and creating a buffer zone to protect Belgorod. The probability that Russia will take control of the rest of the DPR territory is 70%, said the commander of the 92nd Brigade Fedosenko. Russians will be in Dnieper, Kharkov, and Krivoy Rog in a few weeks if the Ukrainian armed forces do not stop them when attacking Konstantinovka and Drushkovka. The goal of the battles at Chasov Yar is not to hold every centimeter of land, but to prevent the Russian army from advancing and capturing the main cities. Slowing down Russian forces in Donbass is critical. Suddenly, on the social network X, X Twitter, a video went viral with a Ukrainian armed forces serviceman trashing the quality of howitzers and their supply system. In a short video, he criticizes not only American howitzers, but also walks through American M1 tanks. We fought for M777 howitzers, but when they were ordered, no one thought that they needed a lot of spare barrels. The howitzers were brought, but there were no barrels. They wear out very quickly. There are no more guns. They've given us ammunition. We have shells, but there's nothing to shoot from. Now they have given us Abrams tanks, and the crews say that this is not for us, especially in this weather. It is too heavy. The filters are located very low and immediately become clogged with dirt. So you have passed and the tank may simply stop. You will have to go out and clean the filter during the battle. What is a tank standing in a field? His life is one minute. 